Hello, hello. I'm Jay, and you're watching DS Tech Media. And in this video, we are going to install Android 10, which is also known as Android Q for Queen's Cake. And we're going to be installing it on my Google Pixel XL. So here we go. Okay, so we now have Android 10 installed. And let's first take a look at the Android website to see what is new. Okay, so we've got live caption, which is basically Android can listen to your video replay or basically any media playing on your device and caption it in real time this is done on the device rather than through the network through Google's infrastructure we have smart reply which uh, Google Android's had that for a while now but it's supposedly been updated and is far more improved there's also a new sound amplifier for I believe your your headphones with sound amplifier your phone can boost sound filter background noise and fine-tune how you hear the best whether talking to your best friend watching TV listen to a lecture just plug in your headphones and hear everything more clearly There's the new gesture navigation system. Uh, we finally have a system-wide dark theme. Better privacy controls, better location controls. Security updates come out faster. And there's a focus mode and also a family link for, I guess, controlling and monitoring what your families who have Android devices can do. So smart reply, if a friend asks you out to dinner, your friend will suggest you text, thumbs up. Then it will also pull up directions right in Google Maps. It even works in messaging apps like Signal. Gestures are now quicker and more intuitive than ever. Go backwards and forwards, pull up the home screen, and swipe up to see your open apps. The dark theme, uh, there's new support for foldable uh, devices, new privacy settings, you get your security updates faster, quality time, different for everyone. For some it's unplugging on the weekends, for others it's spending hours video chatting with your best friend. Android 10 gives you the tools to find the balance. Focus mode for getting in the zone, blocking out distractions. Focus mode is now in beta and lets you select apps, pause temporarily. So if you want to turn off a distracting app to get something done, all you have to do is tap. Alright, let's 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 look at the permissions and privacy. Okay, so it's now divided up into aspects of permissions and it'll show you every app that has those permissions so that is actually pretty cool and these are all the ones that it's denying so that is actually very cool also uh, with locations uh, right after I installed Android 10 the 
there was an Instagram notification and it showed me that Instagram got my location in the background and I was able to allow it to do that whenever it wants or only while I'm using the app or deny it altogether and that that's a really cool uh, capability see all Instagram permissions so you know nothing out of the ordinary there okay Uh, here's the digital well-being and parental controls add content restrictions and set other limits to help your child balance their screen time use app timers and other tools to keep track of your screen time and unplug more easily well, that's very interesting I like it that's you know it's a pretty cool feature Um, oh, and now you can do mono audio and you can change the balances. So apparently Google's live caption and also their advertised bubble feature is not yet available on Android 10 which is actually very very misleading and a little upsetting I'm not gonna lie apparently they're also adding a new API feature that will allow you to capture internal audio which is something that you currently cannot do with uh, like screen recorders like the one I'm using right now, which is a Z recorder So I'm actually recording this using my my microphone Hooked to the computer for simplicity. I could use it um, And well, I'm being misleading you can record the microphone that's allowed but internal audio so like in court recording music that's heading out to the speakers hasn't been available since an uh, older version of Android but apparently now it's gonna be uh, made available to developers so we're looking forward to that so the sound amplifier actually has to be installed from the App Store and I found out some more information about it it's actually one of the more important features of what's being updated in Android 10. So Android's uh, audio capabilities have been pretty lackluster in comparison to iOS. You don't see as many professional recording uh, interfaces for Android, uh, maybe not even any honestly and this might be able to change that. The Pixel XL is already uh, real-time audio capable but this is gonna add for developers tons of new capabilities and it's mostly around audio input devices like microphones etc and so forth. <coughs> Anyway, here is the uh, sound amplifier, and I'm even going to try to record with it. So what it lets you do is, uh, you can boost your signal, and there's fine tuning of what parts of the sound you're able to get, and this is just recording through my uh, built-in microphone right now. I'm running the audio into the computer to record this. And then there's different amounts of noise reduction, so low, medium, and high. 
and then if I did have a, like if I had headphones with a mic plugged in or even a USB microphone I'd be able to select that here and control it so it's actually it's actually kind of cool I'm I'm pretty stoked about this uh, the gestures navigation uh, I'm gonna try and record that a little bit later it's actually not available with the Nova launcher so I'm gonna have to try to reset my launcher and finesse things a little bit I crashed the UI last time I tried to record that and it doesn't you know it's not gonna show you a lot unless I enable like uh, visual touch notifications or whatnot and then of course like I said there is the new system wide dark theme which is Let's be honest, that's probably the biggest thing that, you know, all Android devices are going to get. This phone is over three years old now, I think, so I'm just glad that I'm still uh, getting the latest Android updates. But you can find the, uh, dark theme in display. And as you can see, it is now totally dark and everything's changed. And the uh, settings is also dark. And it can also be enabled from here in the uh, settings menu. So it's actually really cool. I'm really happy about that. You know, that's an aesthetics feature as well as being a power saving function technically but another thing that they suggested and this is actually a hidden feature so the hidden feature is you go into your settings and your about phone and you keep tapping your um, your build version and then you're going to be prompted to enter your pin and I'm going to do that right now in private so once you've done that you'll be given a little build uh, it'll say that Developer options are now enabled, or it'll say you're now a developer. And you can go to system. Developer options. If you scroll all the way to the bottom, you'll get theming, which accent color and there's a bunch of them and I gotta say I actually really like this feature So pretty neat actually. You can change the font and 
we can change the icon shapes. So now we have square icons. And there is the Squircle, which I rather like. And I, I think I kind of like the Orchid theming, actually. So let's look at that now. Yeah, I think that actually looks uh, pretty great. So I've uh, switched to the pixel launcher to demonstrate the new gesture system and we've got full gesture navigation the two button navigation and the traditional three button navigation so first up we're gonna do full gesture navigation so now the buttons are gone, and we're also displaying touches, so hopefully you'll be able to see how this works. So swiping up and holding before releasing will open the app overview, where all of your open apps are present, and a more nuanced pool opens the app drawer. Swiping from the left or right will take you to your last app and acts as the back button. And a fast swipe up will take you to the home screen. And you can actually change the sensitivity. Uh, I had that dialogue open earlier. Now we're gonna go ahead and look at the two button navigation. So with the two button navigation, they've removed the square icon button which is also the app overview button and we still have a home button and a back button and the way this works is now you swipe up on the home button to see the app overview switcher and then swipe up again to open the app drawer and of course the back button works the same and you simply tap the home button to return home. And from what I understand, they plan to actually make this the new default for Android going forward, but they haven't said whether that's gonna be in the next release or when that's gonna become the actual default configuration. So anyway, that is what's new in Android 10. Uh, I thank you for watching. I hope you enjoy this. I hope you, you know, learn something from this. Uh, just for making everything clear, I'm running this demo on my Android 10 Pixel XL, the original, larger version, and a Pixel. My Pixel XL got Android Q available like probably a couple months ago, but I'm just now getting around to installing it. Lots of new videos on the way, folks. Please like, share, and subscribe. We're still trying to grow this channel. It's, it's happening slowly but surely. Uh, I put in a lot of effort, I think. I, I try not to be too spammy about it on all the social sites. And I uh, hope... You can find all of our socials in the video description. Of course, I just created an Instagram. I'm going to be sharing some stuff there. So uh, please like, share, and subscribe. Maybe tap that little notification. Subscribe on BitChute, DTube, Library. And thank you for watching DS Tech Media. We'll see you in the next one.